This video is about branch points, branch cuts and Riemann surfaces. So to understand this video, you first need to know what are the basics of complex numbers, what is the graphical representation, which I have covered in my previous videos. So if you don't know the basics of complex analysis, you first have to watch those videos. So branch points is a very important topic of complex analysis. And this topic comes in because of the multi-valued function. For example, y is equal to root x in real analysis. This is for one value of x we get two values of y this is a multi-valued function so it's uncertain that which value we are going to take so according to our needs we take the value of x similarly in complex analysis we also have multi-valued function and multi-valued functions do not work really well in complex analysis we have to stick with one value if we take different values then our mathematics becomes very unpredictable and we don't know what will be the solution of the problem so to solve this multi-valued problem in complex analysis we have the branch point branch cuts and Riemann surfaces so let's first understand a multi-valued function and see how it's making us difficulties in complex analysis and then we will solve it using branch point branch cuts and Riemann surfaces so First, let us take a function, which is w is equal to z raised to power 1 by 2, which is root of z. This is a simple multi-valued function in complex analysis. And remember, z is equal to x plus i y. Or we can write z as r e raised to the power iota theta. And that is r cos theta plus iota sine theta. And this is the polar form of complex number. And this is represented in here. So now let's chunk the value of z in here. So r 1 by 2 e raised to the power iota theta by 2. We get this value. So now let's look at this graph. When theta is equal to theta 1, which is this, we are getting this value. Now what we will do is this, we will make a rotation around the origin. That is, we will go here, here, here and come back to the same point. And we will expect that when we come to this point, we will have this same value. That is because we are going and coming back to the same point, we should have this value of the function, right? So now let's do this. What we will do is this, we will write theta is equal to theta 1 for the first point in here so the r 1 by 2 e raised to the power iota theta 1 by 2 i just wrote the theta theta 1 so that it doesn't make confusion so now what we'll do is we'll make a rotation around the origin this will be theta 1 plus 2 pi so r 1 by 2 e raised to the power iota theta 1 plus 2 pi by 2 this will be in bracket so now we will get r raised to the power 1 by 2 e raised to the power iota theta 1 by 2 e raised to the power iota pi. These two will get cancelled. Now we know that e raised to the power i pi is minus 1. So minus r raised to the power 1 by 2 e raised to the power iota theta 1 by 2. So now see this. At the same point, w have two value when it's rotated. Now what we will do, we will make another rotation. And if we make another rotation, then what happens is we get the same value r raised to the 1 by 2 e raised to the power iota theta 1 by 2. So we can say that in here, there is a branch point, which is O, origin. So the branch point is a point around which if we make a rotation, our function changes its value at the same point. So in this case, the origin is the branch point around which we are rotating our function and its value is changing. So now if we rotate around this, then nothing will change. Or if we do this, nothing will change. But one complete rotation around the origin is changing our function from one value to another and then returning it to the previous value. So the point which changes the value of the function when it is rotated around it is known as the branch point. Now you have to know what is branch also. So branch point is the point and it gives us two branches for this function. 
so first branch is this one which is r half e raised for iota theta by 2 and the second branch is this one the minus one so whenever we rotate we go from one branch to another and then go from this branch to this branch there are also triple valued function and four valued function for example if i do r z raised to power one by four then we will have four different branch there is also a function which have infinite number of branches which is log of z and this function have infinite number of branches whenever we make a rotation around origin and its branch point is origin also and if whenever we make a rotation around origin it changes its value to a new value so we will see how that happens so now we have this problem in here now how we will solve it the mathematician used a very really weird way to solve this problem they said we have to cut the graph we will cut this graph about the origin to any axis we will cut from origin to infinity you can cut here here also you can cut here 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 but the standard cut is this one you can do this if you cut like this this will also work the same now if we make a cut from zero to infinity in the positive extraction i've taken the positive extraction and never cross this like we will start from here and go to here close to this but we will never cross this axis so we will remain always in the one branch of the function so this is known as branch cut that solves our problem of multi-valued function we will take a branch cut and never cross it and so we will remain always in the principal branch which is the first branch we will never be able to make a complete rotation around origin and this is known as branch cut also you will say what is the use of this thing in here like what will happen if we cut the graph so it have really good uses and also uh, while we are integrating things for example in the further videos we will see complex integration so in that we will not integrate this like this no we won't do this we will make a contour which is like this like we will make a contour like this around the branch cut and then integrate the function we will take this region as the area which is the integration and we will not integrate on the branch cut because i have shown you what are singularities and the branch cut which is the branch point is the only non isolated singularity because whatever circle we make we will have a non analytic point in here the branch cut is non analytic that is another thing the uh, function on the branch cut is said to be non analytic so if you think there is no thing like non isolated singularity then there is one which is branch cut now another mathematician riemann solved this problem in a different way he said we will take the both values but in different surfaces what we will do is this now it's a little difficult to show what are riemann surfaces in 2d plane so i will try to he said we will take two surfaces like this and join them as at the branch cut and whenever we are making a rotation around the branch point which is zero in here like zero in here then what will happen if we make a complete rotation around zero and, and then we are about to cross the branch cut then we will land on this sheet and we will have the different value so in one sheet of riemann surfaces we only have a single valued function so this also solves the problem of multi valued function in complex analysis now to show you what are riemann surfaces looks like this is a picture of riemann surfaces which are stacked on one each other so also now i have to show you a function whose branch point is not origin if we do this for example w is equal to z minus 3 raised to power 1 by 2 then this 3 in here is the branch point for z no matter you make a rotation around origin nothing will change but it will change when you cross 3 point which is on the 3 of real axis also for example there is a branch cut for this function and for this function the branch cut is really unique you can 
try to see how this branch cuts occur in this function but i will show you what happens to this function now this is the function in this function you can see that its roots are plus i and minus i that is z plus i and z minus i raised to power 1 by 2 so its branch points are iota and minus iota which are iota and minus iota like this i'm just showing a rough sketch now if you make a rotation around iota this function will change its value if you make a rotation around minus iota this function will again change its value and if you will rotate around both this function will not change its value why because in this case the branch cut is this joining these two points so if we join these two points and never cross them we will never get two different values of this function so you will say how we will uh, rotate and do the question this is the exercise for you can do this yourself i will give you a hint for this you can put z plus i is equal to e r1 e raised for iota theta 1 and z minus i is equal to r2 e raised for iota theta 2 and then from this you can see that if there was no iota in here the branch point will be origin you will take iota and minus iota as the branch points and then put these values in here and then rotate and put theta 1 is equal to theta plus 2 pi and this also and then solve and you will see how this works now let's see a very interesting function which have a branch point at origin and that function is w is equal to log of z now let's put z is equal to r e raised to power iota theta so that we can do our rotation things so r e raised to power iota theta so let's write this theta as theta 1 okay because we are going to rotate and we will get different values so now uh, from the properties of logarithm this becomes ln r plus ln e raised to power iota theta becomes iota theta ln and e cancels each other because they are like opposite of each other so iota theta one so whenever for example you do this like theta one and now we will do another thing we will add theta one plus two pi so ln r plus iota theta one plus two pi what we get is this ln r plus iota theta 1 we are rotating around the origin that's why we are doing this because the here in z has no thing which shifts this function from the origin so the rotation is being done around the origin for example if there was w is equal to ln z minus a then this function have shifted from origin by a so the branch point is now not the origin the point a the rotation is being done you will put z minus a is equal to r e raised for iota theta and z will become r e raised for iota theta plus a so the rotation is shifted now so that's why this point is becoming the branch point so now we are getting a theta 1 plus 2 pi i so now you can see we are getting a different value so now we will do another thing we will add theta 1 plus 2 pi again so we will get ln r plus iota theta 1 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi i we will get another 2 pi i and they will add up and they will keep adding up till infinity and we will never return to this value so we can say that ln z has infinite number of branches so whenever you go uh, rotation around zero you will get another different branch and you will never return to the same branch of this function w so ln z has an infinite number of branch now if you want to solve its problem using riemann surfaces then this one will have infinite number of riemann surfaces stacked upon each other whenever you make a rotation around zero it will go into another riemann surfaces so this is all about branch points branch cuts and riemann surfaces these are not 
we are topics these have real applications and uses in complex analysis and complex integration why we study complex analysis too much is that because this makes integration really easy and reintegration of real analysis yes we can convert that integration to complex analysis and then solve questions on that so complex analysis is something like seeing things from another perspective and solving them and can and then going back to the same perspective Thanks for watching this video and always remember that math is everything.